What's up everyone, I just want to show you how I did the draft tube conversion to a PCV valve on my Ford 292. This was the tube that came off the car. Somebody pointed out this is basically the same spacing as a fuel pump gasket. And they were right. I think the spacing on it is like an inch 740 apart and it's like a 5 16 by 18 thread. But if you line it up, it looks perfect. So if you end up making your own gasket on it, you just kind of copy the top half of it and then turn it over and do the bottom of it. Kind of like this here. And I just use a paper hole punch and just try to get the holes good on it. This was the piece I made the uh, adapter plate on the car from. I just had a piece of uh, stock sitting around. This is aluminum. I made it extra thick when I machined it just to make sure that the flatness was good on it. Because if it's not, then you're going to end up with a leak out the back side of it, which is still no good. But yeah, so let's get to the car and I'll show you. Okay, so here we're taking a look at my, my old 292. And this is where the draft tube used to be. So stock, let's say like on a Thunderbird, because they use the same engine. There was actually a Ford part number, but that's actually all you need on this end. Outside of ventilation, the other reason to do this on this engine, because if you look over here at my lower control arm bushing, the oil vapor basically destroyed the rubber insulation on it. So it's not only for a ventilation issue, for the sake of the health of the rubber in your suspension because the oil will eat away at it, especially if it's older oil. On the top end here, I have a Holley 2150. The Holley 2150s have a port on the back for a PCV valve. The 2100s don't. So that's what makes it easy on, on this conversion. Basically, any carburetor you have from, like, let's say, mid-60s on probably has a port on there for the PCV valve. So the earlier ones, those are the ones you're going to have a little bit of issue with this conversion. Now, the way that people like to do it on this engine is we have the valley pan. Here you can see the input. On the back of these, if you had a Thunderbird, they already had a port for a draft tube that went down the back. Um, so that's where people like to add the PCV valve. This case, this is a Fairlane, so it doesn't actually have that provision on it. But to me, I figure, what's the point of pulling off my valve pan, or valley pan, excuse me, for the sake of that conversion, if I could potentially end up with leaks from my, my intake, or possibly even from the coolant. I don't like introducing more problems than I already have. So, what I've done here, is I actually added a... PCV valve to the side of my, my valve cover here. Um, the reason why I did this, I haven't put the decal on yet, but it would get in the way of the Thunderbird decal, as you saw in the beginning of the video. I saw some versions of where people put it in the center, and it was kind of stupid looking because they ended up cutting up their sticker into two pieces just for the sake of putting that valve in the middle. But if you look here, that's a pretty clean look to it if you don't look at the paper towel in the back. That paper towel in the back was to keep the, uh, the fumes out from the draft tube as well as making sure that those lines don't rub up on my firewall. And then I added one brass fitting here just to make sure I was making a, a nice corner to it instead of having even more hose to try to make that corner and possibly end up with a kink. Um, so that's actually all I did as far as converting it officially on the car. As you can see here, I added the K&N filter for the input just to make absolutely sure that it would not gum up and not have an input for the ventilation. Because if you did, that's basically just as bad as blocking off the entire system. So that's not a stock look, but... It is definitely a safe bet that it may run dirty, but it's not going to clog. Um, we'll take a look back at the bench, and I'll show you a little bit more about the other parts I have.
The other thing on the conversion that I did was this was actually the original valve cover on the car when I wanted to put it on there. I didn't want to drill a hole in my original valve cover. So you can see here, this has, well, maybe a little hard because the gasket's still in there, but there's an inner lip and an outer lip. These new ones, you can get off Amazon for 50 bucks, and it's a set, but they don't have an inner lip. That's not so much of a problem because at least the oil is going to go in, but you may have some problems when you're putting your gasket on your car. This one I did apply the new sticker to. I just haven't done it on the one on the car yet. Um, my only recommendation is make sure you clear coat them before you put them on the car. I was just kind of in a rush because I just wanted to get it done. But they kind of scratch a little easy, so if you clear coat it first, um, you can avoid some little scratches on it. As far as drilling the hole for the grommet, which we have here, this was a Moroso part. This one has a baffle built into it. Some people weld a baffle into the bottom of their valve cover. Uh, it comes with a piece of foam, but I didn't really like the ventilation it was getting from it. Some people said you could use a a Brillo pad for the baffle in there, but I found too much oil is getting past it. I personally use steel wool. A lot of people will tell you not to do that. I only did it because I have no problem with checking it twice a year for saturation. Um, other people say that over time, if you're not paying attention, it may break down and fall into the engine. So you do want to keep that in mind. If you do get this baffle, possibly can see it. But inside here, where it makes that loop around into the baffle, they kind of leave like a big piece of rubber in there. And you really want to cut that out with like a straight edge blade or something. Because if you don't, you're not going to get that ventilation. And you're going to notice when you start the engine, it's going to rev really high because it's blocked off. So that's another thing to keep in mind. As far as drilling the hole in the valve covers, what I used was a step bit. Which these work really well. The only thing you want to pay attention to though, because I was lucky I was paying attention, is that when you start getting down towards the next angle on it, it's almost going to start because you can see that angle you got there. If you don't pay attention to that, that's going to slowly break the edge bigger until it gets to the next size. So you kind of just want to go at it just a little bit at a time to make sure you don't over drill it or you're going to end up having to buy a new valve cover before you even get it on the car. So I was able to find the right size in here. I think it might have been... What was it? it? Looks like inch and an eighth might have been about where it was, but don't take my word for it. It does leave a kind of a sharp edge on the on the valve cover though. So here's another thing that if you don't have it already, this is a deburring tool for uh, for IDs. I like using these even for any time I buy a brass fitting from the store because they never deburr the inside correctly. Even for my my fuel line, I always deburr the inside before I put it on the car and blow it out with an air hose. I don't like the idea of having a big burr on the inside of a part. I've worked in manufacturing for years and that's just poor quality. But yeah, so the way these work, put it on the edge and you just swoop around until you get all that loose material out of there. A lot of plumbers use this kind of tool. And uh, yeah, so we just, I ended up putting the valve cover in a vise with something protecting it on both sides. I put a piece of wood on the back and a piece of cardboard on the front just to make sure the vise itself wasn't going to damage it. This is kind of self-centering, but I still used a center on it. And then you just kind of go through carefully, and then you just keep checking your size just to make sure you're not going oversized. And then again, you go back at the end with the deburring tool and break the edge on it. But because it's such a thin material, you don't want to go too crazy with it, or you might make it oversized again. So, really, that's it. I mean, it was an easy conversion for me. The only th reason why I spent more time on it is just because I made the plate myself out of stock. Um, you could probably easily buy just a f fuel pump block-off plate, mark it off, and then you can just grind off the rest that you don't have. Um, 
Yeah, so you can leave in the comments how you've done it or if you think there's any better ways of doing it, but I just thought I'd help with a little bit of the interpretation of what you see on the uh, the internet forums from over the years of everyone's opinions. Some people think you should follow the same full route as the engine was intended to come out the bottom, but as I said before, the Thunderbird actually had that port come out the top of the valley pan. So even back then, they didn't route it through the whole system. They just had a tube going down the back of the engine instead of the front. Just so you didn't smell the vapors, I guess. But yeah, so that's it. So thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll see you later.